This is Football at Four. Football at Four is powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. It's brought to you by Bet365. Whatever the sport, whatever the moment, it's never ordinary at Bet365. My man Andrew DeCecco is in the house today at Eagles OTAs. A lot happening up there. He's got a lot of coverage over at InsideTheBirds.com. And right now for Football at Four here on the Sports Bash on 97.3 ESPN. It's got to be nice to be back out on the field, Andrew, seeing the guys out there. It gets you that football feel at the NovaCare Center. How are you, my butt, my man? I'm doing well. It's hard to ask for better weather. Nice practice today. Football is back. All is well. Yes, uh, for at least two days, right? After this, uh, we got one more. The mandatories come up after this, uh, the first week of June, and then we'll have a little hibernation there. Uh, Let's get a couple uh, thoughts from you on some of the players uh, that you kind of had an eye on uh, at the uh, OTAs, kind of set the scene of what you were watching today. Well, I wanted to see if Isaiah Rogers was going to garner first-team reps once again. But Darius Slay was not there. So today the first team corners were Keenly Ringo and Isaiah Rogers. And I thought Isaiah Rogers, again, was around the football an awful lot, acquitted himself well, had a pick six on Jalen Hurts. He jumped a slant route and, and, and took it a short distance. Uh, I thought that some of the uh, – Makai Garner had an interception today. I thought he was really active as the second team safety opposite Tristan McCollum. Quinion Mitchell had a nice practice. Uh, it, this, these – the OTAs and the way that it's set up really plays to the defensive backs and it plays to wide receivers. It's really a glorified passing camp, but I thought that Isaiah Rogers once again was someone that I came away with pretty, pretty impressed. Yeah. I know a lot of uh, the secondary is going to be a big story, right? I mean, I'm assuming when we go to training camp, that might be the biggest story of all is what that secondary is going to look like. The Bradbury situation, we might get more, uh, on that when the mandatories, will he show up for that? He did not show up for these, but you just mentioned a bunch of guys uh, that uh, are all going to be in play come training camp, but that secondary, you said this is a, a camp for the secondary to shine, and that just sets up what will be a huge battle in the secondary at training camp. Yeah, absolutely. That That's the battle that I'm, I'm really fascinated with, and I'm interested to see how it's going to shake out because obviously it's one thing to really impress with the jersey and shorts. Everyone should be able to look good in those, you know, under those circumstances. But Rodgers is awfully physical, scrappy. He's around the ball a lot. That caught my attention. That figures to translate well when the pads come on. But, yeah, I mean, you have to look at it with – there are certain locks. Darius Slay, Quinion Mitchell, Cooper DeGene, Kiwi Ringo is, is a lock as well as the four – then it becomes interesting because then I, I think right now, based on two practices, the context is very important. Isaiah Rogers would have to be the five. It's going to have to be yet to be seen how he's going to translate to playing the slot if he's asked to do that because the Eagles do have a lot of outside corners. And I would have to say Job would be, as, as a core special teamer, would have to garner some consideration. Then Eli Ricks is really interesting. He got nicked up in the first practice, and I didn't see him an awful lot today. He had a lot of injuries at LSU and Alabama, unfortunately. So you have to, you know, maybe keep an eye on that. And that's going to obviously play into the conversation as well. Yeah, you know, it's funny. Um, Job's a guy I think we almost forget about because of all the other names. He almost seems like he's lost in the sauce behind the Eli Ricks, the Kaylee Ringos, obviously he, he Cooper. Got, Go ahead. I will say he got some He got some second team reps with the third team today. He's, he's still grabby, he's still physical. But I think the fact that as a seventh corner – He, as a special teams ace, that's kind of what you're looking for there. And I also uh, should say that Avante Maddox got safety work while Tyler Hall saw first-team reps at nickel because C.J. Gardner-Johnson was not there. So I don't want to exclude Avante Maddox. I think if he's able to stay healthy throughout the summer, maybe you can make a case for potentially keeping eight, say, eight corners and only three safeties because he does offer some versatility. I'm glad there. you brought There's Maddox. To keep an eye on. I'm glad you brought Maddox up because I was going to ask you about him. Like, is he penciled in as a nickel, or do you, are they going to try to, you know, tap into his versatility? Yeah, that, that's what it seems like. It seems like they're really enamored with with his ability to contribute in multiple areas. Obviously, Cooper DeGene figures to project as someone who can be moved around. Right now, you, I don't know. I don't know that you want to move a rookie around all over the place. You want to get him settled into one role and then be able to, once the roster dwindles down uh, to 53, that's when you start to, you need him to be able to wear some different hats. But I think Maddox being the, the veteran that he is, he's able to stay healthy. He, was, he, he had a nice practice, in my opinion. He was around the football. He closed quickly. Smart player. 
So I, I think that there's a lot to like there. It always, it always comes, it was never about ability. It always comes down to health with him and availability is, is the best ability. So he's going to have to be able to prove that he can do that. Otherwise, you know, he could find himself on the outside looking in, but if he's able to make it through the summer healthy, Mike, one thing to keep an eye on is that you'd have to think the Eagles that would have a hard time parting with him because that's when teams are looking for, they're, they're short on bodies. Guys are banged up. So it's not a slam dunk that he would be able to clear waivers if that were the case. Talking with Andrew DiCecco, football at four here on the Sports Bash from InsideTheBirds.com. Uh, a linebacker, Devin White, Zach Bond's name, uh, did any of those guys catch your eye uh, at today's camp? Devin White always, I mean, I shouldn't say always, in the two practices that were that we were able to see, impresses, impressed me with his range and as, athleticism and fluidity and space, his ability to stick and track lineback- uh, running backs out of the backfield, I thought Oren Burks had an up and down practice today. He gave up a, a tough uh, ball down the, on a back shoulder to Albert Oquavenom. And I think EJ, no, EJ Jenkins, Andre Sam gave up that play down the seam. I'm trying to run through all the different plays in my mind right now. But uh, Van Sumeren and, and, uh, was the second team linebacker with Oren Burks. Jacoby Dean worked in as the first team linebacker, he sw- swapped out with Bond. And he also saw some second team work switching, switching out with Ben Van Sumeren. That's going to be another interesting one. I, we were doing uh, yesterday 100 days until the opener, 10 stories uh, leading up to the 100 days. Devin White, like, what is he? I, I don't know what to think. You heard a lot of people kind of down on him. Colin Thompson, who played against him, was on with us last week and said, look, he, he still has it, man. Uh, so he, he he's intrigued by what he brings. I don't know what to think about White. You, you I think, uh, tweeted this out. I want to give you the credit uh, about N'Kobe Dean, thinking that he's a guy uh, that to keep an eye on. I know a lot of people I, – I was excited about Dean last year uh, and obviously the injuries. Like, can he hold up? I think that's going to be another big thing. And if he doesn't hold up, right. do they have enough depth behind him? All right, and I, I'll say this about Nakobe Dean to kind of expand upon what I wrote on social media. This is a player who was completely healthy as a rookie. Granted, he only played 34 snaps. He was more of a special teams player, but when he did get to play, I believe it was in a blowout loss, blowout win to the Tennessee Titans. Pretty much every snap he was out there, he had a tackle, and he was making a play. So the sample size was small, but then last season, obviously, he had the two foot injuries. It was Frank injuries, obviously very serious. But to label somebody as injury-prone, who is, is sort of one for two in terms of uh, his pro you know, injury history. I think it's a little premature. This is a 23 year old kid. And, uh, you know, he has a clean slate, just like everybody else under a new defensive coordinator. He's cerebral. He's instinctive. Just hearing him talk, you know, if he's, if he's able to put it together, they're going to have a really smart second level player that who knows, Dick Mangio may view him more as a will linebacker. He, he still looks like to be the same size. And I think him and Devin white, that pairing on the field, getting that together would be the best, the best formula for success there. And I wouldn't be so quick to write off the Kobe Dean. I think that's a little unfair. Uh, I do want to, you know, I saw some video of Jordan Davis. Uh, it looked like a different human being. Uh, it, it, does he appear the same way uh, in person that he does in video? Yeah. First of all, obviously he's an enormous human being to <laughs> begin with, but he looks a lot more trim. He he said he's 350. He was he said he played at a higher weight last season. If that's if you can kind of fathom that, he didn't specify what that weight was, but he looks to be a, a lot a lot more trim and focused and dialed in. And you know he's they all seem to echo the same sentiment of liking how much of an old school mentality type of coach Vic Bangio is and how disciplined and structured he is. And they all seem to be fully bought in. Obviously, that's easy to say now in in May May 30th. And how's that going to be when you get in the dog days of the summer when the pads are on and Vic Bangio is yelling? Um, that, that's a whole other scenario. But I would say right now there's a lot to be encouraged with with Jordan Davis. He looks, uh, looks quicker. He looks trim. And, and he seems to be almost recalibrated moving into this uh, a crucial 2024 season. Yeah, looking forward to, uh, you know, I, I we did the 10 stories. One of my stories was jo- uh, Jalen Carter. Is he ready to kind of go from, you know, hey, had a good first half of the season, exciting guy, to – I don't want to say all pro, but like in that conversation, because he, he was a guy who could have been the number one pick of like, is, is Jalen Carter ready to go there? But if you get a better version of Jordan Davis, that changes the complexity of almost everything, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And and I do think that Jalen Carter is ready to take that next step and, and play it an all, all, all pro caliber. If he's able to channel that, that dominance that we saw in the first half of the season and extend that throughout the entirety of the season, that's going to be the key. But I think a coach like Vic Fangio 
he, yes, he's tough and he's demanding, but that also he's also able to get the most out of a player if you're willing to buy in. And all accounts right now are that a lot of these young players that are coming from big time programs like Alabama and Georgia are fully bought in and they're used to being pushed and coached hard. So I wouldn't worry so much about that. But you mentioned Jordan Davis just being that 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 another centerpiece. You mentioned Jalen Carter that those two are the players that the defense should be built upon. And having somebody who can move people and commands double teams like that, it opens up the possibility for other players to get in on the action. It will keep a player like an Akobe Dean clean, which is important. So if he's if he's able to kind of sustain that level of play that we saw for those first five ga- five or six games or so, Jordan Davis, the Eagles are going to be right on track. All right. Uh, and t- typically OTAs, you talk about secondary players uh, being this kind of stars. What about the wide receiving? We know Brown and Smith, they're locked in, but everybody else seems to be up in the air. So how would you handicap uh, what you're seeing from the next group of guys? Well, and I was actually really impressed today with Paris Campbell and John Ross at the podium. They were very insightful and engaging. And, I mean, if they make the team, they're going to be some really good quotes. I think Paris Campbell has the better uh, the better odds, of course, but, uh, John Ross looked quick. He got behind the secondary. There was an underthrown ball that Kiwi Ringo had a chance to – I think it was Kiwi Ringo. I'm, I don't even remember. But there was a chance that somebody had to pick it off. Um, I, I thought he had some good bursts to him. He's still a long shot to make the team, obviously, because when you're that far down the depth chart, special teams becomes paramount. He was not returning punts today. So, but, uh, so I think that that's something to, to kind of take into account there. But Paris Campbell has seen a, a ton of targets for the pr- two practices that I was there for. Seems to have established in an early rapport with Jalen Hurts. Has battled a litany of injuries throughout his career. Is coming off a dismal season with the New York Giants. Here we averaged 5.3 yards a catch as a speed receiver. It's a little concerning. But I think right here and right now, he seems to be almost reprogrammed. He talked about how he came to Philadelphia on a top 30 visit. And how he came away with an impression that he just loved being here. And he wanted to be an Eagle. And now he is. So we'll have to see if those two guys are able to take it the, next, you know, take it the rest of the way. But Joseph Ngata is a player who... I really like, I've got a chance to know him, talk to him throughout the season. Big body guy. He offers a different type of dimension than the other two players that I've mentioned, but it's going to come down to special teams with him. Can he cover kicks? Is he able to gain separation, which was a problem for him last season after he hit the ground running early. So those are some of the three, those are the three guys that I'm looking at right there. And then we haven't even talked about Britton Covey, who I don't think it's enough props for what he can bring as a receiver. Very good short area quickness. He's terrific on the move. He put a move on Mario Goodrich today on a short route and completely had him turned around. Uh, he, he's, he's a player that I think has a lot more to offer as a wide receiver than he's given credit for. Yeah, he'll be interesting, right? Because he's in battle for not only the receiver to help out in that room, but I'm assuming that he's going to be in a battle for uh, the, the punt return job. Brayton Covey, uh, he's, a, he's in the lead. Uh, Brayton Covey is, is among, the, at least if we're basing it off of 2023, he's the top punt return in the NFL. So that counts for something, and – there's a there's something to be said for having a st- stabilizing presence back there who you know is going to be able to field it cleanly, get off the field, get some positive yardage. Obviously, he has a lot of experience with his blockers and Michael Clay, so you like the continuity there. But I also think, as I, as I just mentioned, that he has a lot more to offer as a receiver than he's been afforded the opportunity. Last summer, he had the hamstring injury and wasn't really able to showcase that. Now it's going to be a lot different. Now, I'm not suggesting that he's going to be suddenly a volume-based slot receiver or anything to that effect, but I think that he can be a confident piece that garners more snaps on offense. All right, Andrew Nacheco, he's got a ton of coverage over at InsideTheBirds.com. You can check all that out. You can follow uh, all of his tweets at Andrew Nacheco, and uh, of course, right here on Football at Four, breaking down Eagles OTAs today. The boys will be back on the field tomorrow, then a couple days off, and then uh, they will have uh, the rest of the summer off, but that means we're just getting closer to training camp, and we'll have it all covered for you here on Football at Four on the Sports Best. All right, Andrew, I'll talk to you next week, pal. Actually, no, I'm off next week. I will not talk to you, uh, but I will talk to you soon, I'm sure. Well, have a good uh, have a good week, and I'll talk to you soon. All right, buddy. Uh, Andrew DeCecco is, uh, of course, inside the birds.com Eagles beat, and uh, he was here on the Sports Pass Live on 97.3 ESPN.